All right, so I'm going to be talking about the more practical side of stuff today. So the stuff that you guys are involved in every day. So how do we prevent and also how do we treat contact dermatitis um, in the healthcare setting? So I've got this lovely picture here which sort of breaks it down into the um, three main points or things to consider. So with your prevention, you're sort of thinking about reducing your exposure to skin irritants and Rosemary's spoken a fair bit about that, but the main things to remember are reducing your contact with soaps and antiseptics where possible, um, reducing your hand washing and wet work where possible, um, reduce your heat and sweating, so when you're wearing gloves for a long period of time, your hands can become quite hot and sweaty. Your paper toweling and your hot water are also irritating effects. And then we have our skin care. So that's broken into a couple of different groups of skin cleansers, your alcohol-based hand rubs, your moisturisers and your gloves. But then gloves also have their own category because they're really important um, for your health and your patient's health. And it's really important that you choose your right glove for the job that you're performing or the tasks that you're doing and remembering to um, change them regularly to stop that sweat build up. So as I mentioned, skin care is one of the most vital things in the prevention and treatment of contact dermatitis. And we like to think of it as a package. So all of these three things are crucial. So your hand cleansers, what are you using? Can you use a less irritating one? Your moisturizers and then your gloves. So with your hand cleansers, there's a couple of different categories. So we've got our soaps and our liquid soaps. So they're often called your social hand washing product. So your MicroShield social hand wash, so your pH 5.5 and your seven. Um, an allergy to those ones aren't that uncommon, as Rosemary's already mentioned. They're normally products that don't contain um, antiseptics, um, often used when you don't have to do the non-surgical procedures, and they can be a little bit more irritating than your soap substitutes. And bar soaps, as we know, can be quite um, alkaline and drying to the skin. So then we have our antimicrobial skin cleansers. So these are often the ones that contain your chlorhexidine. Um, fortunately, chlorhexidine allergy um, is quite uncommon. And your antimicrobial antiseptic hand washes can sometimes be quite drying to the skin and often people come into clinic saying, oh, it's the chlorhexidine causing problem, it's really drying to my skin. <coughs> and then our alcohol-based hand rubs, so they're used in the majority of healthcare settings um, these days. However, we do know that their um, uptake and support vary from centre to centre. Um, I was speaking to a colleague um, a couple of weeks ago and some clinic that she had been involved in said that the nurse there did not believe in alcohol-based hand rub at all. So each to their own. Um, and as Rosemary did mention before, we do hear of a lot of people saying, I can't use alcohol-based hand rub, it stings my hands, it's drying, it's damaging, I much prefer soap and water. But it's gonna sting if you've got irritant contact dermatitis. So if your skin barrier is already damaged, there's cracks and splits, of course it's gonna sting. Um, it does not mean that you're allergic to it. And that's a really important message for everyone to take back to their workplaces. So if you hear your staff um, when you're doing hand hygiene checks or whatever in the workplace and they say that, it doesn't necessarily mean they're allergic to it, it just means that their skin barrier is already compromised. And another thing you can also try is try different brands of alcohol-based hand rub. If one doesn't work for you, try another one or talk to your um, suppliers about changing types. And then we have the soap substitutes. So these are the ones that you often purchase in the chemist or the pharmacy. Um, there's many different brands available now and they're less irritating than normal soaps. Um, they have a similar pH to the skin and they're really good for people who've already got the damaged skin. They're not always suitable for use in the workplace, um, but this is something that you can talk about just for your social hand washing. And if you can't use this in the workplace, you could use it at home um, to reduce your contact with your liquid soaps and things that can um, damage your skin. We do encourage a non-fragrance product. Um, they're a much better variety for your skin and um, as I mentioned about the bar soaps. I did have to laugh the other day, I um, was talking to someone from a major metropolitan hospital um, in Melbourne and their staff who did have ha contact dermatitis were referred to a staff um, clinic and the GP there is telling them all to stop using all forms of um, hand hygiene and only use Pears Block Soap. So, so and a word of caution, as Rosemary has already mentioned about the methyl isothiazolamine um, issue, um, it's in quite a few products. Um, not only just baby wipes and things, but it's also in some shampoo and hair products, um, sunscreens as well, and then can be in makeup wipes and things. But um, it is being removed from quite a few products, but it's still in a, um, a few things. I recently did a check of the baby aisle in Safeway, and I did find that all the baby products had had all the MI removed. But that was only in the one shop. So moisturiser, we know it's crucial in the prevention and treatment of contact dermatitis. It just helps restore that skin barrier. 
And there's several different types of moisturiser. My son here uh, really loves Cetaphil moisturiser in a tub and has painted himself in it and the walls. I've recently repainted that room and um, it's not easy to paint over. <laughs> greasy moisturiser. So you've got your ointments there, your really thick, clear, greasy um, moisturiser. They're in a, often in a big tub. You might have seen Dermes. Um, it's really greasy and it's not always the most practical product to use um, at work because it takes a long time to soak in. So it might be one of those ones if you do have damaged skin or have a healthcare colleague with damaged skin that they pop it on their hands before they go to bed and maybe put some cotton gloves on over the top. And then you have your creams. They're the ones in your tubs or your tubes. They're quite greasy. Um, try and choose a, um, a fragrance free product and just limits that risk of be, uh, becoming uh, fragrance allergic. And once again, because they are so greasy, it may not always be that practical for use during the work day, but you can maybe apply it at the start of your lunch break so it's got that hour or so to um, sink in, or once again use it at the end of the day as you're walking out the door, or also <coughs> use it before you go to bed. And then you have your lotions there, your moisturisers that tend to come in a big pump pack that you often see in hospitals. So they're a thinner, watery, more su watery substance, not quite as moisturising as a cream, um, but they may be more practical for use during your working day because they soak in a lot faster and you won't be left with that sticky sort of residue. I must say um, recently there has been a product, um, a cream which has been made in pump pack. So going against our rule, you know, lotions come in a pump pack. This is actually a cream that comes in a pump pack and it's very good. Um, so you could always try that in your workplace as well. So we see some people not applying moisturiser correctly, but you guys are probably great with that. But just remember to rub in between the fingers and in the web stasis and up to the wrists. And barrier creams. This is a bit of a tricky area. Um, there's a lot of conflicting um, information about barrier creams, whether they work, how effective they are. Um, we like to think of them more as a moisturiser. So if you think of it like that, apply it at the start of your day or at the end of the day. So gloves are also a crucial part of the skincare package. Um, it protects you and your um, patients, but there can be a level of hazard associated with the gloves. So they can cause irritant contact dermatitis from you sweating inside the glove, especially if you're wearing them for long periods of time and you don't get the chance to change them regularly. And then you also have the risk of allergy. So your latex allergy and then also your allergy to the um, ingredients used in the glove manufacturing as Rosemary spoke about before. So the thiorams and the carbon mates. Um, it, we did see a fair bit of the allergy to the accelerators, as Rosemary also mentioned, um, and we also encourage, discourage the use of powdered latex gloves, so really try and avoid these. Most hospitals um, don't use these anymore, occasionally you do still see them. Um, a couple of aged care centres I know were still using them. Vinyl gloves, um, a lot of people in some centres were using vinyl gloves, and they're not as protective. Um, as other glove types such as your nitrile or your latex. Once again, I did a talk a couple of years ago at an um, aged care facility and I was talking about vinyl gloves and the um, nursing unit manager came up to me at the end of the talk and she goes, do you know what? The only gloves we provide in this whole centre are vinyl gloves. There was no other glove type um, provided. So, you know, the level of protection, how good was it for those patients and for those nurses? You know, it depends what, you, what role you're playing in your job. So are you coming into contact with bone cement? Are you in surgery? Think about the glove that you're using. Is it protecting you against the ingredients in the bone cement? Chemotherapy, you know, how often are you coming into contact with the chemotherapy drugs? Are the gloves you're wearing protective? Um, are the drugs penetrating through? Are you exposing yourself? Once again, the same for sterilisation. Choose the right glove for the job that you're performing. We've developed this little flow chart, what to do if you have skin problems. I was handing some out the door there before, but if you didn't get one, come and see me at the end, I've got some more. That's how you can handle the skin problems in your workplace. So if you're doing a hand hygiene audit and someone's got contact dermatitis, this little flow chart will step you through each level of action. And if you do develop skin problems, what do you do? So on the flow chart, these are some of the points that we point out, but I'll just quickly run through them. So don't try and hide the problem from your management and your staff. Talk to them about it, report it. Once it's reported, you can work on a strategy of how to handle it going forward. You know, look at your hand washing. Can you cut back? Are you doing lots of hand washing and lots of alcohol rub? Can you use um, alcohol hand rub instead of the hand washing? Just think about the tasks that you're doing and where changes can be made. Yeah, alcohol hand rubs, can you use it more? Try different brands if they're not working for you. Moisturiser, are you using moisturiser? It's amazing how many people actually don't use moisturiser and they say, oh, my skin's really dry. It's like, well, if you've washed your hands 20 times in the last 
half a day, your hands are going to be dry. So really think about making moisturiser part of your routine at work and at home. So your gloves, make sure you're choosing the right one for the job. Can you change them more regularly if you are getting sweaty? And think about things at home as well. So if you're doing lots of washing at home, lots of cooking, lots of cleaning, can you use gloves? You can wear cotton liners inside your gloves if you are wearing gloves for long periods of time. Of course, that's not appropriate for um, at work in the hospital setting, but at home you could definitely do this. If you've tried all these measures, so you've used some moisturiser, you cut back your wet work and things still aren't improving, maybe it's time to go seek some help from your GP or a staff health clinic. You might need some cortisone for a short period of time just to settle the rash down while it's um, red and flared. And then if all else fails, you may need to be referred on to a dermatologist for some patch testing. But a lot of the time, you know, a lot of the problems can be sorted out before it comes to the patch testing. But um, we also encourage people, if they come into contact with the latex gloves, to have a blood test. Sometimes by talking to management at work, you might just need a rostering change at work um, and have a bit of time to get away from the wet work and the exposure to the irritants. That can play a crucial role as well. And there, as I mentioned, seeing the dermatologist for patch testing. And I do laugh that Rosemary and I use exactly the same pictures for this. So the workplace, you know, we encourage workplaces to have a skin management plan. Have you got a process set up? What if someone does have contact dermatitis? Does that come hand in hand with your hand hygiene audits and checks that go through in your workplaces? The role of the employer is also crucial. If you're having a lot of people with contact dermatitis, can things be changed or reviewed in the workplace? Can you look at changing gloves? Can you look at changing hand washes? introducing different moisturisers or changing moisturisers. You know, the workplace has a crucial role in all these things. And healthcare workers must remember to consult with infection control staff if they are changing any of their products that they're using at work. Don't ignore the problem, it's not always going to go away that quickly. And if you let it get really bad, of course, it's going to take a lot longer to heal. Um, and yeah, a good skin care plan. We've got, I think, a draft one up on our website that we did several years ago, but it's a good idea and good... Um, it's a place to start with developing your own for your workplace. And um, I was handing it before, we're running a general skin education day um, at the Skin and Cancer Foundation, or by us, um, in February. So if you're interested in learning about all things skin, um, feel free to have a look at the full program on the website. And we've got lots of other information on our website. But as mentioned previously, we have been working with the team at um, Hand Hygiene to develop um, a contact dermatitis prevention module. So we've got a little section added into the um, short hand hygiene module and we're also um, doing a full standalone contact dermatitis module as well. So that should hopefully be up and running um, by next year, early next year, end of this year. So um, yeah, keep an eye on that and if you've got any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you.